Hi, it's Glenn with the Late Night Lab about um, gas loss, right? Uh, yeah, I was just messing around in here for a minute. Sorry, I'll just clean up my mess now. Okay, so in the background. Um, in the background, you see there's PV equals nRT, very important equation. You can, you can see that P is for pressure, V is for volume, N is for moles, which is a way of saying number of molecules, and R is a gas constant. It al it's always the same number, no matter what experiment you do, as long as you're using a certain unit for pressure and a certain unit for volume. And T is for temperature. Temperature is always in Kelvin for gas laws, please. Always in Kelvin. You can't have it Celsius, sorry. Um, pressure, in this lab we're using units of atmospheres for the pressure. And that's gonna make the R 0 0.0821. It's always gonna be 0 0.0821 as long as you're using atmospheres for pressure and liters for volume. The volume is gonna be in liters the N is going to be in moles. Remember, a mole refers to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. Just like 12 refers to a dozen. Just like pair refers to two. Mole refers to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay? And then, uh, and temperature, you know, it's Kelvin. So you can solve this equation for volume by dividing both sides by P, like so. You can solve the equation for n by dividing both sides by rt, like so. Why would you ever want to divide by rt to find n? Why would you want to know the moles of gas? You want to know the moles of gas sometimes if you want to identify the gas in your container. And how would you do that? You would use one of these, this handy dandy nifty scale or balance. If you weigh your container, and then weigh the air that goes in your container, and then subtract the mass of your container out, then you'll get the mass of the air. Once you have the mass of the air, if you divide that by the N calculated like so, then you'll get the molecular weight, MW, also known as the molar mass. By the way, isn't it interesting that molecular weight means the same as molar mass, but the initials, MW, is are almost the same as the initials MM for molar mass with one letter upside down. Aha. Uh -huh. Anyways, when you know the molar mass of your gas because you divided the mass as you found on the balance over the N as you found by calculating like so, when you know that number, you can use the periodic table to figure out which 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 one is your gas. For example, if you calculated for the molar mass or the molecular, molecular weight 39.948 grams per mole. Well, then your gas is argon. If you calculated 83.8, then your gas is krypton, isn't it? And if you calculated 28 grams per mole, then your gas is N2, nitrogen gas, because 2 times 14 is 28. It could be silicon, except for the fact that silicon is not a gas at room temperature. So, how would you possibly know that N2 is how nitrogen exists in nature? I mean, everybody knows that nitrogen is a gas, but how would you know that nitrogen was, was N2? Well, you would know by remembering the name of my friend, Mrs. Hofbrinkel. Oh yes, she can be your friend too. Hofbrinkel. Please remember her name, Hofbrinkel. Hofbrinkel. Oh, yes. Hydrogen gas is diatomic. Oxygen gas is diatomic. Fluorine gas is diatomic. Now, bromine is a liquid at room temperature, but it is diatomic. Iodine, pure iodine, is a solid at room temperature, and it is diatomic. Nitrogen is a gas at room temperature, and it is diatomic. Chlorine is a gas at room temperature, and it is diatomic. You may have encountered Mrs. Hofbrinkel in your lecture portion of this course. Uh, I, I mean, the, in the lecture course, which is a separate course, of course. But uh, uh, just in case you didn't, this is my friend, Mrs. Hofbrinkel, and I hope you'll remember her for the rest of your life. And now, uh, that is uh, the way we use the ideal gas law, PV equals nRT, and that is the way we identify gases 
using the mass and the number of moles. Of course, these, these things you can measure in the lab, volume, pressure, temperature. And the R, of course, is something that doesn't change. So now, you can also calculate the molecular weight using this formula, which is just a, which is just a fancy all-in-one pot way of uh, doing this. Uh, first calculating the moles, and then finding the mass, and then dividing the mass I'm sorry, dividing the mass by the moles. That's the, mole, the molecular weight. You can also do it all in one go. I prefer the more step-by-step -step approach, but that's just me. Um, procedures. There are three experiments here, one with volume and temperature, one with pressure and volume, and one with, yes it is, the mass. Uh, the mass, the pressure, and the moles. So, let's have a look here, shall we? This is part one, uh, experiment one, and um, let's see, uh, uh, um, step number one. Get a 150 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask. How do you know that this flask is 150 milliliters? Do you trust the procedures? You don't need to trust the procedures. In fact, we'll find out later in this uh, video that sometimes it's not a good idea to trust the procedures. But in this case, let's have a look, shall we? I can fill this Erlenmeyer flask with water. Oh, look, the maximum amount of water that I could fill it with is 150.00 milliliters. That must mean that the procedures are correct. This is a 150 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask. All right, I double click it. I close it. And there's a nice little cork. Incidentally, folks, the software says that the flask has zero milliliters inside. But of course you know it is not zero milliliters inside at all. The flask is full of air. So the flask is, f is 150 milliliters of air. I mean, the flask's volume is really 150 milliliters of air. But now you know, if you think about that for a minute, it's more than 150 milliliters of air, you know? Because 150 milliliters is just the amount that you can measure if you added a liquid here, and that would be to this top mark. What about the headspace, though, above that top mark? What's the volume of that? If this were a physical lab, you know, and you and I were together doing this experiment, then that would matter. We would care about that little headspace because it would make a quite a big difference. I mean, that's at least 20 milliliters, right? So we would do um, um, some other um, work to figure out what is the volume of the entire flask to the brim uh, with the stopper in, of course. Uh, but uh, since this is software, we can't do that. And we're not going to do that. We're just going to assume that you have 150 milliliters of air in this 150 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask, okay? I will file a complaint with the late night labs people to tell them that this is inaccurate. But in the meantime, we're just gonna have to make do. Now, um, attach a gas syringe. Yes, yes, it says from the material shelf, but they didn't put it there. They put it in the instrument shelf. In my opinion, it should be on the container shelf, but yeah, they didn't ask me. So there it is, we put a gas syringe. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't um, add the air. So let me go add the air first. Uh, yeah, get rid of the gas syringe. So, hello, okay. So let me go add the air, the materials. I'll add the air. Now, if I add 1.5 atmospheres of air in here, how do I know that that's what happened? This isn't in the procedures, but I think it's a good idea to just check. Ah, yes, 1.5 atmospheres. However, of course, I'm not going to add 1.5 atmospheres. You're going to add 1.5 atmospheres. I'm going to add some other amount. I'm going to add 1.66 atmospheres. Maybe 1.67. Whoops, too much. 1.67 Okay, 1.63, how about that? All right, 1.63 atmospheres. Okay. Notice that when I added it didn't add the pressure. It just set the pressure to the new pressure. You know, that's how it behaves here. It's also how um, it behaves in, in, in the real world, by the way. Uh, but uh, 
that's that, that that's um, that's a digression. All right. So now, um, what's next? What's next? Oh yes, the syringe. So I add the syringe. Now watch the pressure gauge behind the syringe. Once I add the syringe, ooh, the syringe moved. And look, what's the new pressure? Aha, uh -huh, that's right, one atmosphere. What happened? Well, there was 1.63 atmospheres in here. That was a high pressure compared to one atmosphere out here, which is a lower pressure. So pressure comes from molecules moving around and hitting um, the walls of the container and hitting the pressure sensor. That's where pressure comes from. So these molecules, when I connected the syringe, were able to hit the plunger of the syringe until the syringe moved, the plunger moved, and gave the gas molecules more room to move around. So once they had more room to move around, they were no longer hitting the container and the pressure sensor with so much pressure. So this, this plunger of the syringe was going up and going up against the pressure of the room, which is one atmosphere. So when the pressure inside was equal to the pressure outside, well, the syringe could no longer move up. The molecules no longer had sufficient uh, energy or force um, to move this plunger up. So that's the story behind what happened. Now let's get back to the work. So we're going to read that volume now. So what's the volume here? 94.5. It's not going to be 94.5 for you, mind. It's only 94.5 for me. And the Erlenmeyer flask is zero, right? No, we just saw it was 150.00 milliliters, remember? It's actually more than that, but we're going to ignore the little headspace volume, right? We're just going to assume that it is completely 150.00 milliliters rather than um, a little bit more than that. So anyways, this is the volume of the air. Whoa, 244.5 milliliters for me. And let me get the temperature, because that was another step. 20, at 21.5 20, degrees Celsius. All right. Oh no, my lab notes. I got to save those lab notes. Save notes. Save notes. All right. Lucky me. They didn't go away this time anyways. All right. So uh, read the volume of air. Uh, attach a thermometer. Record a total air volume and temperature. So I did that, right? Total air volume and temperature. Good. And now I'm going to get the constant temperature bath. Where is it? I don't see it. Ah, here it is. Constant temperature bath. Put it on the counter there. All right, now they say in the um, lab procedures that you need to click the button and set it for an ice bath, and that is exactly what you need to do. Boom, not dry ice. Boom, not ethylene glycol. Boom, it's an ice bath. That's right. And now I'm going to put this whole thing in there. Clunk. And move that away, please. And then uh, there we are. Temperature is dropping, and look at that. You could, if you watch real closely, you could see the syringe uh, dropping down, maybe, or maybe not. Did it drop down? I couldn't really tell. It's like watching grass grow. Well, anyways, we're waiting for this to go down to zero. Okay, it's zero. Now I roll over here and I get 76.7 milliliters. You know what? I don't think that went down at all. Quality control issue. Anyways, 76.7 milliliters. So it, ostensibly it did go down. I didn't see it go down. So what is the new volume? 76.7 milliliters. Of course, your number will be different. 150 point, uh, uh, laggy. 0 0.00 milliliters equals, gosh, I have to add that in my head, um, 220, um, it is 220, uh, yeah, if I were just a little bit smarter, I wouldn't have to do this, 
There it is. Calculator. Where is it? Ugh. I don't see it. Do you see it? No. I didn't get it, did I? That's alright. No, it's not alright. Let me get the calculator. Calculator. You. Yes, you. Okay, thank you. 76.7 plus 150. Yes, 226.7. Sorry for the delay. I know you could do that in your head, but I can't. Right. Of air at 0, 0.0 degrees Celsius. Save notes. Always save your notes. Learn that the hard way. And the procedures. All right. So now um, I'm going to do that again at 60 degrees Celsius. All right. I'm going to do it again. Oh, I'm going to do it at 40 degrees Celsius. Sorry. Uh, yeah, let me just go to 40. Okay, do that at 40 degrees Celsius. I'm going to write down the new volume and the new temperature. So it gets to 40. So, you know, I, I won't make you wait here in the video. Um, you, you get the idea, right? You roll, roll over this when it gets to 40 degrees Celsius. And maybe I will make you wait. <laughs> it gets to 40 degrees Celsius. Hello. Four. <laughs> oh, yes. The joys. Okay. 40 degrees Celsius. And then, you know, you roll over that. You add that to 150, right? And you do the addition, right? And you say the temperature. And you move on. You, you change it to 60. You do the same thing. You change to 80. Whoops, you do the same thing, okay? Did, did, they, did they say to go to, whoops, I didn't save my lab note. Oh, but it saved, okay. Did they say to go to, yeah, they say to go to 100, all right? So you do all that, and that's experiment number one. Goodbye, experiment number one. Um, yeah, maybe I'll do a separate video for the other experiments. Yeah, I'll just stop the video now. How about that? Stop the video. Hello. Stop the video. Oh, lordy. Is this on the fritz? Oh, no. It froze. Did this really freeze? It did freeze. So what am I supposed to do? Do the whole thing over again? Oh, lordy. Say it ain't so. Thinking about it. Ah, yes. 